Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. For today's video we're actually going to be checking out something super cool, that being this Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager class Highbrow, undeniably one of the coolest figures to come out during that 2010 era of toys and even to this day I still regard this as being one of my favourite non-appearance live action movie figures. Now for those of you wondering as to not only who the heck is Highbrow but why does he look as if though he appeared in one of the live action movies, well during the Hunt for the Decepticons era Hasbro would quite frequently give us these almost what if character designs, basically taking older characters, stylizing them to make them appear as if though they actually appeared in the movies and I think Highbrow is a prime example of that. This is probably one of the best almost concept characters that they ever put out and even to this day I still think it holds up exceptionally well and it's quite a shame that we don't really tend to see many of this type of design nor characters introduced into the studio series. I definitely think that there is a whole Pandora's box just waiting to be opened if Hasbro were to once again dip their toes back in to these almost concept ideas and we kind of saw it with their Studio Series Thundercracker, but sadly that guy was released back in 2018 and here in 2022 we really haven't seen anything similar to that. But nevertheless, taking a look here at Highbrow in his World War II-esque fighter plane alt mode, looking incredible. I think as far as an actual fighter plane is concerned, this has got to be one of the best mainline representations that we've ever seen officially produced. And for those of you who up until this review have maybe never seen this design, I'm almost certain that upon first glance you probably would have mistaken this for perhaps a third party Toy World piece, just as we never see anything of this sort in the main line which is quite unfortunate but you can see as we take a look here towards the front of the plane we've got these massive propellers of which actually look really cool and even here for the engine you can see we've got a really nice metallic gold now this does in fact actually have quite a few gimmicks packed into it so one of the first gimmicks were that if you were to push the actual engine piece it would cause the propellers to spin something of which I thought was such a great touch and once again it's something that we just don't tend to see on modern day mass produced figures but you can see we've got these massive machine guns attached to the side Sadly, they're rather impractical if Highbrow were to use these in battle against the Decepticons during flight, he'd no doubt gun himself down and of course plummet to his own demise. But you can see here for the underside of the wing, we've got these wicked looking brown missiles of which have actually been sculpted really awesome. It's a shame that they're not in fact actually spring loaded as I definitely think that would have been the icing on the cake. But nevertheless, as we take a look at it here from a bird's eye perspective, you can see the variety of nuts and bolts that we've got scattered throughout as almost surface detail. We've even got the cockpit and I really love this almost painted tattoo tattoo detailing here along the side that is a really nice attention to detail as we spin our attention here to this almost rear wing you can see once again very nice looking sculpt work we've got these really peculiar insignias personally I'm not that sure as to the relevance or significance of these so if you do know what these are supposed to resemble please let me know down in the comment section below but overall such a fantastic looking plane mode by far one of my favorite alternate forms that we ever saw from some of these conceptualized characters now he did in fact actually have some proper working landing gear so you can see these wheels do in fact actually roll which did allow him to glide along the ground with absolute ease so you can have highbrow just about to prepare to take on in-flight battle against perhaps Starscream or the Decepticons and he does in fact actually have quite a cool and intricate transformation so to begin with what you're going to want to do is take these propeller blades and just collapse them in just like so we can then remove the machine guns and set these here off to the side come to this side and repeat the exact same process flip your attention here to the back now it's been quite some time since i've actually transformed this so please do excuse me if i do metal a few of the steps up but i'm almost certain i remember how this is supposed to go you'll then want to rotate this section in like so collapse this piece in take this rotate this down and then take what will become the front section of the foot and hinge this piece forward we can then rotate this and you can see we've got a slot and a tab that this there will snap into and then with the heel spur you basically do just snap that there into place come to this side and you guys guessed it rinse and repeat so just hinge those toes up come to this side snap that into place and snap that into place and something of which personally I thought was great engineering is just kind of how all of this works upon first glance you literally wouldn't be able to see where any of these almost vehicle mode components would end up in terms of robot mode but believe me when I say the conversion is so so clever so as we flip here to the underside you're going to want to collapse the landing gear in we can then take these panels and just pop them out and hinge them here all the way to the back until they do snap there into place I believe this was supposed to kind of fit underneath but for some reason it is fighting me so we'll just leave that there for now we can then come here to this side and pop open this panel and of course hinge this section down snapping that there into place so this is how the leg should transform I'm not quite sure 
as to why this one here doesn't want to tab in. But those are essentially the legs fully transformed and I'm pretty certain you guys are wondering how on earth is this actually going to become an almost humanoid robot? Well this is where some of the steps become really really cool. So you'll then want to fold down these wings so that they become the almost outer skirt region of the bot mode's torso. We can then come here to this section and just this engage this section come to this side and repeat the same process and then in regards to this piece I believe that what we're now supposed to do is detach these outer panels which will allow us to flip this upwards and then you'll want to hinge these two pieces together which will form the lower section of the torso which once again is really really nicely done we can then spin our attention here to the top open up this front section and then just kind of hinge the arms down, flip our attention here to the back, split this piece here, and the actual cockpit does become an almost thruster for robot mode. So you're then gonna to wanna to hinge this section down, hinge that up, and in regards to these wings, it's really up to your own personal preference as to how you display and orientate them. Personally, I like to give them a little bit of flair, just like so, and then here for the arms, you'll then just want to straighten out the fists. And with all that being said, there we basically have the Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager class highbrow, fully transformed up into what I personally think is a really, really cool looking robot mode. Now granted, some areas don't look the best, most noticeably would be in regards to where kind of the propellers end up in terms of the forearms. But other than that, I actually think it's a pretty solid design as we bring him in here for a closer look. That head sculpt looks really, really nicely done. And if anything, kind of reminds me of the Age of Extinction crosshairs, especially when we take this almost fighter pilot battle mask and extend this down. You can see that is undeniably the goggles that crosshairs used in Age of Extinction, but a really, really nicely done figure. And the actual eyes of the bot mode can be seen through the goggle sections here of the battle mask, which I thought was a really nice touch. And it's also really cool just how drastic that battle mask does alter the look of the bot mode head. But overall very impressive looking design here for the torso as you would expect from a live action bayverse character it's very intricate in terms of design so we've got loads of mechanical detail i actually love how this guy has got some plain kibble hanging off of him it actually does become a part of the bot mode unlike some of the more recent bay films such as the last night where for the most part the bot modes were quite clean this is definitely how a transformers character should look we've got some intake detailing here i do like how this almost front engine piece to split to become the shoulder sections of the robot mode you can see those massive propellers hanging out here to the side they do actually become some weaponry here for bot mode which i'll showcase in just a second but we've got the fist there and as we just take a look down to the lower section you can see how those wings with the missiles attached do become these almost skirt pieces which i guess he could use in battle as those missiles are still locked and loaded and you can see very nice skull work overall i think the way this guy comes together is incredibly impressive and as mentioned beforehand the actual cockpit does double as an almost intake slash thruster here for bot mode which too has got some really nice sculpt work. Now, in regards to articulation, surprisingly actually pretty poseable. So the head is on a swivel, so it can rotate left to right. We do get a hinge joint here at the shoulder, which can hinge out to the side, as well as forwards and backwards. Full rotation at the bicep, as well as a 90 degree bend there at the elbow. The wrist, due to transformation, can hinge forwards and backwards. Sadly, nothing at the waist, but that's just due to the nature of the design. The hips can kick forwards that far, as well as can kind of kick back to that far. And very surprisingly, we actually get some heavy duty ratchet joints hinging out to the side, which is a really neat touch. And we do get a rotation there at the thigh, 90 there at the knee. And then finally, where the foot is concerned, a full ankle joint, as well as some pivot going forwards and backwards. So in all, a pretty poseable looking figure. Now, in regards to kind of the functionality here of the propeller blades, you can in fact actually collapse the wrists in to create these Decepticon face mincers. Now, if this guy deployed them in battle, oh my goodness, he would absolutely shred an opponent in half. And to be honest, I actually think that having the hands displayed like this looks a little cooler instead of actually having them kind of sticking out to the side. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think, but we can also take the machine guns that we saw as part of the plane mode and utilize them here as weaponry for our robot mode so they too do just snap into the sides just like so 
And overall, come on guys, this is just such a cool design. I really am hoping that for some of the future waves of Studio Series figures, we can once again begin to see some of these more concept characters introduced. Personally, I'd love to see what Hasbro would do with maybe an updated design of Breakaway. I definitely know that is in the pipeline in terms of rumors. So I am hoping that eventually we can see something like Highbrow reintroduced into the mainline. But in terms of some mainline comparisons, here we have our old 2010 era Voyager class Highbrow compared alongside Studio Series Bayverse 2009 Revenge of the Fallen Optimus Prime and of course the 07 Clunk on Bumblebee. So in terms of Voyager, he's definitely still up there in regards to what we would expect from the nowadays Studio Series and I actually don't think he scales too badly at all in terms of a real life representation. I'm not quite sure how that World War II fighter plane would compare next to a Peterbilt semi-truck but personally I have no issue in actually displaying these guys in robot mode together. I think they look really, really cool and in terms of aesthetic, once again, I think that he blends in really nicely with some of these appearing live action movie characters. And so some final thoughts for this Transformers Hunt for the Decepticons Voyager class highbrow. Overall a smashing entry into the Hunt for the Decepticons line. This guy was so well done back in 2010 and even here in 2022 I think he holds up impeccably well. 12 years after his release he's still one of my favorite non-appearance live action movie figures and honestly is a prime example of just how well done some of these concept characters actually turned out. I am aware that there was a Revenge of the Fallen Deluxe Lockdown, which took heavy inspiration from his animated appearance, but once again was almost realized into a live action movie aesthetic. And they also did the same with characters such as Breakaway and a few other Hunt for the Decepticons voyages, such as Mindwipe and of course Skystalker, of which I do in fact actually have reviews up of over on the channel. This guy's great in terms of the fighter plane mode, by far one of the best planes that I've ever seen Hasbro produce officially within the main line. The attention to detail is just incredible. The various different nuts and bolts that we've got scattered throughout the surface, the actual gimmick or where you can push the engine in order to turn the propellers I thought was such an awesome touch and the inclusion of realistic landing gear just made it so so well done literally this is one of those rare examples where I'm quite indecisive as to whether or not I should keep a figure in robot or vehicle form as overall this guy's just so nicely done the transformation surprisingly actually isn't that all complex for a play mode of which comes together so nicely and it results in an equally as badass looking robot mode I think the attention to detail where the head is concerned looks awesome I love the fact that you can indeed actually almost collapse that battle mask down to create a completely different look for the character and much like in play mode you can in fact actually utilize the propellers as almost Decepticon face mincing weapons in robot form. I think the attention to detail where the design is concerned too is really awesome and just overall it's a fantastic looking figure. For those of you who do in fact actually wish to go on the hunt for this guy I would certainly recommend keeping an eye on some eBay listings. Sadly he does go for quite an extortionate price tag now on the aftermarket so if you are able to find one for a decent price honestly I would definitely recommend recommend picking him up. As mentioned previously, he's by far one of the best Hunt for the Decepticon figures that I think they ever produced, especially where those conceptualized characters are concerned, and I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always with these types of reviews, if there is any specific character that you guys would like me to take a look at over on the channel, definitely let me know down in the comment section below and I'll try and sort some form of review out. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, please feel free to let me know your thoughts on both the figure and the review down in the comment section below. I thank you all so much much for watching and until my next review I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.